Hello YouTubies, this is The Scribe and thank you for watching one of my bodacious, amazing YouTube videos. So I'm about to take a Kevin Dutton psychopath test. Right, so I want to see where I lie on the psychopathic spectrum, so to speak. Now, according to Kevin Dutton, everyone has these characteristics to some degree as you can see on the screen around about here yeah everyone has these characteristics to some degree take the test and find out where you sit on the spectrum so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the test and see where i sit on the spectrum that these these guys claim that we all have psychopathic characteristics now yeah we've all got you know characteristics similar to psychopaths we've also got bodies similar to psychopaths too it doesn't really mean anything it's just one of those things uh, characteristics really doesn't mean anything we're looking at the emotional components of psychopathology the the lack of not so called empathy which is your ability to put some put yourself into somebody else's shoes but compassion which is where psychopathies psychopathies psychopathic individuals fail they don't really have any remorse or any um, compassion at all or very little so I'm gonna take this and uh, see what happens now I have taken this a few times before and the reason why I'm doing it again is because and about three or four days on i started to doubt some of the answers i gave uh, i always knew that the test was a little bit dubious anyway but then i had a second thought i sort of realized where this test was going and why many men such as myself would actually score pretty pretty well on this psychopath test now well is not a good thing but this is how these guys think you know oh my god if you are scoring very well on this psychopath test you are a hero Kevin Dutton will want to get in contact with you. Let's take the test. This test should take less than five minutes to complete. Let me just get that into your head, right? So this test is going to take less than five minutes to complete. Don't think about the answers. Just answer it as quick as possible, okay? So I'm going to do it in the opposite way. I'm going to try to think about the answers to show you why in less than five minutes people might actually get different results than if they took more than five minutes. <laughs> so let's start the test. You rarely catch me making any plans. I'm far too spontaneous. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> the, the, what, what type of uh, emotional component can I get from this? What type of um, remorse or um, compassion can I feel from this? I am pretty spontaneous, so I'll agree, right? I am. I mean, you, you see me on YouTube and on the internet, I'm spontaneous as hell. So I agree. I have no problem cheating on my partner if I knew I could get away with it. Yeah. Now, this could actually be a little bit tricky to answer. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, just imagine uh, if, if uh, you know, you know, you know, if one of the Doctor Who ladies came up to you and uh, nobody would ever find out, what would you do? Yeah. <laughs> okay. If I got a better offer, I wouldn't mind cancelling long-standing plans. Okay. So I've got to take less than five minutes to do this, right? So I can't really think about it, but let's actually think about this because to answer i have to think about it a little bit but if i said i wouldn't mind cancel long-standing plans that could mean anything uh, uh, maybe i had a long-standing plan of having a swimming lesson somewhere oh, yeah actually i would actually completely cancel that pretty immediately so i agree with that but um what happens if well what does it what's plans what do you mean by plans do you mean like going on holiday or do you mean going to some type of chess congress with somebody they, they both have different sort of uh, emotional components. Some of them I don't feel anything for. Some of them I would. If it was somebody dying in the bed, uh, then I might actually have something. But on the whole, so what? I'm going to say I agree. I don't mind cancelling long-standing long plans. But then again, it doesn't mean anything because you're not actually giving me any emotional components to go off. So next one. I don't get bothered by seeing animals injured or in pain. Uh, uh, well, I've watched so many Discovery Channel um, 
documentaries about lions eating uh, fluffy animals that nowadays that were mostly desensitized to this sort of thing it's not totally true though um, I will admit that in certain circumstances I do get a bit annoyed if I see animals in pain I'm not sure if it's because the animal's in pain or it's any idiots inflicting the pain on the animal that I want to get at totally different things so am I really that bothered if I see you know a limping dog or something like that no am I bothered if a dog is squealing not really no because they're annoying so it's it's a difficult one to answer without actually showing any real anything real to go off uh, let's say we saw like an animal on the screen in pain somewhere uh, maybe it's hurt its foot I, <laughs> maybe it's being tortured what do you mean by that question so mostly I agree with this but that's only because I've been sensitized by the media now if I go back long enough when I was a kid, before I started watching Discovery Channel, you know, where tigers are eating animals and snapping other animals' necks, I would actually say disagree because, you know, I was in floods of tears when I was watching Bambi. Yeah. Uh, so what changed? What changed? Did I suddenly just turn into a mad, crazed psychopath overnight? No, I didn't. And it's because this test is a complete load of rubbish. So I have to put agree with that because... I see so many Discovery Channel documentaries. I don't really feel anything for the animals being hurt at all. I'm sorry. Uh, now, if it was a pet, pet like a cat, I would say agree. But on the whole, I've seen so much of it, animals being ripped apart. Uh, it doesn't really affect me the way it used to. It would have to be one of my own pets to really have that influence on me. And already I'm taking longer than five minutes. So I'll put agree with that, okay? It would be fun to drive fast cars, ride roller coasters and go skydiving. Of course I bloody would. Um, I've been on roller coasters. I've done a bungee jump in the past and I've been in a fast car. Uh, <laughs> all right. When I was younger, listen to this, when I was 12 years old, I was absolutely terrified of riding a roller coaster. Now I've done so many, it doesn't bother me anymore. Uh, desensitization again so can I Paul disagree or agree here w which w wouldn't it be better to phrase the question like have you ever been afraid of going in a roller coaster or skydiving or being in a fast car with a lunatic would it be a lot better to put that in the question rather than what what do you feel nowadays and nowadays it wouldn't bother me one bit if you've been on i've seen people go skydiving the first time and they're holding on to their life i've seen people on roller coasters and they're saying oh should i go i don't want to go should i go and then once they go the first time i don't want to go again and again and again so your question your answer to this question could change depending on your age and your experience of this sort of thing so i'm going to put agree watch this I think it's okay to step over other people to achieve my own ambitions. Well, uh, this one's a little bit complicated. Uh, but again, I've got to take less than five minutes to answer the question. So uh, let's just go off my YouTube experience because people know me on YouTube. Have I ever took the piss out of anybody or tried to step over somebody just for a laugh and just at their expense of my own pleasure? Yes, agree. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. Uh, but, you know, if I was going to say, would I step over a family member to do something bad? And maybe not. But the the question is, the statement is so... It's trivial. It's trivialized, the statement. They're not actually getting anywhere with this. Um, I've seen, you know, a psychopathic woman uh, wanting to murder her husband, right? And it was just like... Uh, are you sure you want to go through with this? Because once you pay me this fifty dollars, uh, you know, and the other fourteen grand later, there'll be no going back. And she goes, "Yeah, sure," as if it's just putting down a dog, right? So uh, anyway, I'm just going to put agree because yeah, whatever. Because who it is? I am very persuasive and getting people to do what I want is a real talent of mine. <laughs> um, I I don't really persuade anyone, uh, to be honest with you. Um, 
So this one is, I wouldn't say I'm that persuasive, but I try to be, don't I, on YouTube. Uh, let's put this one here. I just slightly agree, not totally agree, because I don't go about building cults or anything. So there you go. I, I'm obviously after attention because I make YouTube videos and I'm trying to get people to see my opinion. So in some ways that is persuasive or trying to be persuasive, but is it actually working? I don't know. Uh, let's put next. My ability to make quick decisions means I would suit a dangerous job. A dangerous job. Uh, you've just talked about bungee jumping and skydiving and, uh, you know, going on a roller coaster. That's not dangerous. That's just having a good bloody time. Um, and then they put that in their mind and then suddenly they're hit with that question. And most people say, yeah, I agree. And then when you think about it later... And you think police, you think about the armed forces, uh, where people protected themselves, by the way. Um, things might change. Uh, here's a question for you. If you were confronted by a gang of hooligans, all carrying weapons, would you fear for your life if they were after you? Okay. Or would you be involved in a dangerous job like a firefighter? The... the completely different things uh when you think that way but in a dangerous job yeah i'll be a firefighter no problem so you know i can be a bungee jumper uh, a skydiver uh but i would hate to be involved in a massive fight somewhere where we're taking on 15 people at the same time that's completely different but the police do that this is where they don't this is where people forget but if you watch a movie like backdraft and you're seeing a question like this you would say being a firefighter is a dangerous job. Being a doctor is a dangerous job because you're actually being exposed to toxic people, uh, tox toxins, um, allergens, all sorts of nasty bugs and viruses. Depends how you think, doesn't it? So I'm going to put agree, but I would be tremendously nervous of being in the police shoes if I didn't have enough support. That's being truthful. But to this question, agree, all right? When people around me are crumbling under pressure, I'm usually the one with a cool head. Technically, yes, I'm also somebody who's really excited and gets over, you know, gets over the top about things, just has a damn good laugh. I don't really let things that get to me too much. Um, so what can I say here? I would, act, I would agree, but it also depends. Have I ever, let's say if I rephrase this question, I'm answering this this particular question, this particular statement, by the way, but let's rephrase it. Have you ever been nervous given a group, um, a normal group presentation? Would you be nervous to be in front of a very large crowd given a presentation? Um, and then, well, I would, for one thing, uh, which shows I'm not fearless. But then again, I make videos on YouTube where thousands upon thousands of people might see it. And in fact, uh, thousands of people have seen some of my past videos. Uh, tens of thousands of them have seen just a couple of the videos alone. So uh, can I keep a cool head? The answer to that is actually yes, I can. Uh, but it depends on the situation. Not every certain situation is the same. I'm not very good with giving all presentations, but I'm good in pressure uh so if somebody was pointing a gun at my my at my face i'd be pretty good at that but i, won't, I wouldn't feel as confident if it was a big big gang so many different things come through my mind with this particular question so i'll just mark myself one down on this and say agree uh, but not strongly agree okay if somebody gets conned who cares they're asking for it <laughs> uh it depends on a con doesn't it it depends what it is. Now, it depends also on your state of mind. So let me get this into your head, right? Let's just say that... Uh, <laughs> let's just say that somebody just hands over their money to a street you know, card game and uh, it's one of your family members. You'll call them stupid and you'll say, you'd actually deserve that. Uh, but let's say it was a massive bankers scam um they're asking for it so people are asking for this bankers scam which is cunning people out of their homes etc 
uh, notice the empathy sort of switch here where I'm actually talking about I'm actually starting to give a shit about the small people um, I would actually say I agree in part and disagree with part, on part with this but only because I actually thought about the question and I've taken longer than five minutes to think about it but the first thing that comes into my mind is somebody just giving away their money through gambling which is being conned so I'm going to put this anyway, but before I would agree, now I, I'm around about this. Okay, so let's go on. I really blame, I, I really blame to things going wrong. It's usually the fault of people around me. Um, well, that's a complicated question in itself. Uh, am I to blame for things going wrong in my life or things going wrong elsewhere that affects my life? Uh... I do blame other people a lot of times. I blame the bankers for the problems we have in this country with finance. Uh, I sometimes blame other people. Uh, I don't blame myself enough where I am to blame. Uh, so, and I do blame myself sometimes because sometimes it's my fault. But I'll, I'll just agree with this. Let's see what the score is, okay? Uh, your gender is male. My age, uh, let's just put mid 30s, okay? <laughs> occupation I'm a king a king so where do I actually come from here if you're a king what are you you're a king you are a chairman a president of a company um, I can't really see it on this so I'm just going to put chairman right? <laughs> income oh, about the education college high diploma uh, favorite news source I do not read the news okay I don't I well I, I do but I do it for comedy purposes I don't really give a crap what to say uh, favorite animal hmm. I'm not really keen on kittens by the way <laughs> I'll just put that down but I like cats okay uh, I prefer fish over cats uh, over kittens but I prefer cats over fish. I just want to get that into your head. So I'm going to say fish. Uh, piranhas could be interesting too, but you know, whatever. Uh, I also like jazz, by the way. As you can tell, I'm a pretty jazzed up person. Let's see what my score is. You can play hardball with the best of them. You know what you want and you are not afraid to go and get it. Even if it means bending the rules occasionally and putting a few noses out of joints on the way. Nothing phases you. You are decisive, self-confident and pretty much up for anything. You are a means to an end person. For you, it is not necessarily a matter of right and wrong, but what gets the job done. Bring it on is your mantra. But to help those around you keep their heads, you should learn some tricks to help your temper your self-satisfying tendencies so 88 percent which means on a psychopathic spectrum i am in the top 12 percent okay now can i just explain something to you only one percent of people allegedly in the uk are psychopaths so if you're not in the top 99 percent you're not a psychopath, even by the definition of this test. Although even Kevin Dutton, when I spoke to him, actually admitted it's more like one in four. Okay, it's more like one in four, which would actually say uh, the top 96% are psychopaths. This gives the wrong sort of diagnosis because people would read this and would think, oh, you're a psychopath. But even then, even with the questions themselves, I am not convinced even with that score I think that score would be a lot lower if the questions were rephrased I didn't see any questions that would really get my empathy going at all it was just all you know business like that's all it was it was just business uh, how you deal with real life uh, you know do you get into arguments a lot or something like this this test does not convince me that it's a psychopath test let me say something like have you ever cried uh, during a movie? As a man, have you ever felt like crying during a movie? Or felt upset about a main character being in danger or being in a hurtful situation? 
Have you ever tried to fight back the tears and cinemas when you've been sitting next to your girlfriends and mates? Uh, embarrassed that you might actually go into tears and uh, you've hidden it pretty well. Uh, I've not actually seen anything like this on the test, by the way. Um, have you ever read anything in the newspapers or ever seen any, something on a TV in the last in your life that's upset you? <clears throat> have you? So if I said, you know, a young child was murdered somewhere and you saw pictures of how the child went through a lot of uh, torture, etc., you, you, you never felt anything about it for it. Or th this is the sort of thing I'm thinking of, you know, when I'm seeing psychopaths, because psychopaths would just go, ah, oh, whatever. Uh, but I'm saying, have you ever felt anything for you know in the past that you've seen something bad happen you thought oh that, that shouldn't have happened i feel upset about this have you ever really cried at a movie have you ever felt upset about something that you've seen somewhere in the world uh have you ever felt sorry for somebody things like this this proves that somebody has an empathetic field around them if they say yes but even then people lie to themselves if uh, if i said no to these questions i would have to lie about it if I said, no, I never cried when I was a kid after watching Bambi at five years old, I would be a complete and utter liar. In fact, I was in tears at the time. Yet, this psychopath test scores me at 88%, which means I am in the top most bodacious 12% of the population. Uh, maybe I'm just somebody who can see all the crap in you know our life, and uh, I have to be that way so I can actually put up with the lunatics in charge. Or maybe it's because these guys are trying to show that everybody is a psychopath. That all of you have psychopathic tendencies. Every single one of you. That is exactly what they want you to think with this test. This is why somebody like me, like me who cried at Bambi, is getting 88% on a psychopath test. This is because somebody like me who cried or was almost fighting back tears uh, during a Doctor Who special <laughs> is scoring eighty eight percent on the psychopath test. You know, even even things that are not really shouldn't make me you know tear up or well up. Sometimes I do. I'm a man. I I hide it, but if I'm being truthful to myself. There are times when I do feel sad about certain things. I, I read a few years ago, well, it was last year, about a baby that was taken by D D Dingo <laughs> in uh, Australia. And my head was spinning. What would happen if that was one of my family members? And, uh, you know, that baby could have gone through so much. You know, it, you know, what happens if it didn't die immediately? It was just eaten alive or something. Uh, these sort of things were running through my mind. You know, the, 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 the amount of pain that some children have to go through. But look, guys, I'm scoring 88% on the psychopath test. Me. This is the type of BS we're putting up with nowadays. This is normalization, guys. And not one of those questions is relevant to a psychopath. Even to a normal person, how are you supposed to get any empathy from that? A psychopath is somebody who has compassion, right? But... To a normal person, when you're reading these questions, it's not question and statements, you're not really going to feel anything for it. So you just go to try to think of things you did in the past. And it might just be because you haven't got enough time to answer the question, because the questions are rather trivial and, um, how can you put it, vague, that you won't actually answer the way, in a truthful way, but you might think it's truthful. That's the difference. But I would ask anybody out there, have you ever cried in your life? Have you ever felt like crying in your life? Because a psychopath never cries, never feels the need to cry ever in their life. If you have and you get a score like this and you're in tears at five, at five years old to a Bambi movie, <laughs> you're definitely not a psychopath although you can actually be um, you can be desensitized to this sort of thing to pain to pain to other things uh, but that's a completely different thing uh, psychopaths are people who don't really have an emotional component to them 
Uh, but they do feel anger sometimes. They might put on fake tears, but they don't feel it. But if you ever felt the need to cry or ever cried yourself, you cannot be a psychopath. It's not a bad thing. It just means you are a tough guy who happens to have cried once in your life uh, if you get a you know, high score. But don't, don't go down this road where you believe in this sort of crap that you're reading from Kevin Dutton. Because any man would get a high score on that if they've been through life, if they've been through the workplace. You, you just would because it's just easy to get a high score. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye for now. Oh, by the way, have a look at somebody called Thomas Sheridan on his uh, websites and on his videos because he explains this a lot better than I can. Uh, I'm not I'm not particularly good at explaining this sort of thing. Uh, have a look at his videos on this. Uh, look at things like desensitization. Look at things how they're trying to normalize psychopathic behavior uh, as if it's a good thing. Uh, you know, most of you would now nowadays would score a lot higher on the psychopath test than your ancestors 60 years ago. Okay, anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye for now. See you later.